What's going on guys? Today I'll be installing a Redline N7 Milsim HPA engine into an M4 gearbox. Long story short, I really like and highly recommend these engines. I own two myself and although I've never made any content on the builds, I have been using my N7 at all large scale Milsim events as you'll see on the screen now. I'm doing this install for one of my team members, so I figured I'd at least get this one on camera. A few reasons why I praise the N7 are, it's a true closed bolt system and fully mechanical, meaning there are no batteries or wires involved, and the closed bolt system provides really solid shot over shot consistency. With no batteries or wires to worry about, the N7 is going to serve you well in any weather or environmental conditions. Lastly, this is a semi-auto only engine, making it perfect for the rifleman role at any Milsim event. You can fire the N7 just as fast as you can pull the trigger due to the purely mechanical functionality of the engine. Alright, let's get into the install. First off, the gearbox I'm installing the engine into is an A&K NS15 gearbox shell. I do recommend this shell for the N7 because it requires absolutely no dremeling or modifications to allow the N7 to install properly. A lot of the other gearboxes out there require you to dremel away some of the material in order to get the N7 to sit flush in the gearbox. Keep in mind that this gearbox shell does not come with any hardware. You will need the gearbox screws, a fire selector plate, and a safety latch as well. I've already installed the safety latch and the fire selector plate on this gearbox. So here is the Redline N7 Milsim engine. When you open the box, it's going to be in three parts. Simply connect the two loose hoses to the corresponding connection points on the other piece. Screw your macro line in and your engine is going to look like this. I could go ahead and install the engine as is, but my buddy requested to change out the airline to a reinforced IGL from Amped Airsoft, so we're going to go ahead and do that first. As always, you can find the links to any of the products I used in this video in the description below. To change out the airline, simply twist off the factory hose and replace it by screwing in the Amped IGL. Careful not to tighten this fitment too much. Hands tightened is going to do fine, I just used a pair of pliers to softly tighten the final rotation. The N7 also comes with a gearbox retention piece that allows the buffer tube screw to secure the gearbox in place once the rifle has been fully reassembled. I like to insert my buffer tube screw into the retention piece and then lay them in place in the rear of the gearbox. All this is going to do is make keeping that retention piece in place much easier when it comes time to close the gearbox shell. Once the retention piece is in place, I'm going to go ahead and install the trigger and trigger spring. Once the trigger spring is in place, I set the trigger into position. Now it's time to drop in the engine itself. I gently lay it into place, keeping the logo on the cylinder centralized and facing me for a proper install. With the cylinder in place, I route the air hose through the gearbox and out through the motor hole in the grip. The N7 trigger mech is held in place by the two smaller body pins in an M4 AEG. The N7 ships with a special body pin that is gold. This gold pin is going to be used to secure the lower body pin area and your rifle's pre-existing body pin will be used to secure the top side. Insert the gold body pin nub side down into the lowermost hole. Keep in mind both sides of this pin are not the same and you want the nub facing down. I then push the trigger mech down, guiding the gold body pin through the trigger mech. At this point I line the trigger mech up and check the trigger contact. You do want some slight play before the trigger hits the firing pin, but you can fine tune this for a shorter trigger pull if desired. I took no action here as the trigger play was just fine for a Milsim build. With the trigger making proper contact, push the other body pin from your disassembled rifle into the second slot of the trigger mech. This will secure the HPA unit in place, allowing you to close the gearbox. But keep in mind you're going to need to pull that pin back out when you drop your gearbox into your rifle's lower receiver, and then once the gearbox is in the lower receiver of the rifle, you can just push the pin right back through the same hole. This will secure the N7 HPA unit into the gearbox, as well as the gearbox into your rifle's body. With both of the pins in place, carefully close the gearbox, lowering the top side into place. During this process, be sure to watch out for any hoses being pinched or squished as the gearbox tightens together. Gently close all edges of the gearbox and begin to tighten in place.
Once all the screws are tight, I'm gonna test the engine before giving it back to my buddy. The engine's functioning as it should, and that completes the engine into the gearbox installation. If you needed to see how to break down and access your rifle's gearbox, check out the video links in the description below. And I do have a full Redline N7 ground up rifle build video in the works. Once the rifle body that I'm putting the engine in comes back from being repainted, I'll be able to show you guys the entire process from rifle teardown to install to reassembly. Thanks for checking out the video guys. As always, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. I've also created a Twitch page. If you ever have any questions or you just want to come hang out and game, visit me at twitch.tv slash I'll see you guys in the next one.